Way at the back, there's an actual uh, dancer, but he really is the clown. And that clown is actually symbolic of the five-fingered being, and that is us. Yeah, hey, welcome to the video. This video is about the uh, yay but shay. We filmed it a few weeks ago, and after we shot it, my dad called me and said we left something out, and that was that the yay but shay or the yi uh, is the dancer and the 12 dancers, and the bache is the clown at the end. You're gonna learn all about that through the video, but that was something we left out that was important, and so we've just added it here. Yay but shay. It, uh, yay but shay is actually a uh, ceremony that is only done during the uh, winter time. But the, uh, the first uh, of the Yay uh events is in the, uh, recognized as the season of the year. Raj is what our people call the uh, uh, fall equinox. And that's when uh, the uh, Yay Bache dancers can come out and they have the uh, entire ceremony. But the uh, story of the Yay is actually something that goes way back, back in history. And it talks about the time that uh, changing woman uh, gathered some of her children and they went out to the, uh, to the ocean, possibly the Pacific Ocean, because she wanted to journey further west to be with her, uh, her husband. And so some of her children went with her and they launched a boat and began their journey out on the ocean. After four days, she had to return. And when she returned, she says, the reason that I came back is because I've got to give my children the seven ceremonies that they're going to need. And uh, these were probably what we would call the uh, beauty way ceremony. Huijonja is what uh, we call it. And the, uh, there were seven of them. So we have in the stirring sticks that we keep in the home, the women use to stir food. There are seven of those. And there's also other th things than that that are in uh, the number seven. And that is to remind us that we were given the beauty way ceremony by a son up there and before she went to be with her husband. But the uh, thing that is a lot of times not mentioned and forgotten is the uh, other words that she said. She says, I cannot give you the eighth one. The eighth ceremony is going to have to be given to you by a man. And so when that word was given out, everybody just had the seventh ceremony for a long time until the Yebuche ceremony was given uh, to the Dene. And that was given by two sacred beings that appeared to a young boy. Now the young boy is said to be 12 years old and uh, he was concerned because he felt like there was something lacking in the ceremonies and, and that that were given by the uh, changing woman. And so he went and of course uh, became very curious and the two sacred beings appeared to him and they give him the eighth ceremony, which is the uh, the And so he organized the uh, the dance and the ceremony itself, the entire ceremony, the way the regalia is made and, and uh, what is worn by the the people that uh, perform the uh, ceremony, and also the uh, the big uh, sand painting that is done inside of the hogan. The entire floor of the hogan is uh, made up of the, uh, the painting. And this is a portal for the holy people to come and be with us. And as they are with us, the entire event of the uh, Yebuche is called the uh, Nakai. And that means that you walk around with the holy people and you're with the holy people as they have uh, come to be among us. And so the uh, way that the ceremony is done is that uh, the head dancer and the main deity that represents all of the uh, sacred beings as they communicate with us is the one that they call Hashayatke, which is translated to say the one that speaks of peace or the speaker of peace, Hashayatke. And then there are 12 others in that that he organizes. And these are the ones that uh, a lot of time people don't understand and they call the growling god or the house god. But uh, they are actually called Hashayatke. These are the ones that speak peace in the home and show you how to do peace be peaceful people in the home. Hashijawan is sometimes the way they pronounce it. But there are 12 of them. And so at these uh, events, uh, when the ceremonies are performed in the uh, fall of the year, first the uh, two sacred beings, Ye'ash is what they say when they, Ye'ash is when they go and they, these two sacred beings are represented 
and uh, the, the Neh take their corn pollen and um, they uh, make offerings and they make promises as originally what it was is that uh, the holy people if you will do this for us we will do this as your children and uh, that was the way that the uh, offerings and that yanada ifni is what they call it and so after that then the uh, the Yebiche, uh, before they get into a dancing situation, they go out and collect donations. And they go from home to home in different parts of the area. And uh, they receive uh, whatever is given as food items in most cases. And they use that uh, during the ceremony uh, to feed the people that might come to be the, at the place where they call them Dakai. The Yebiche dances as they are performed is that uh, the head yei, He's the one that I called Shayeth uh, here. He has the uh, 12 feathers in his uh, head headdress, and these are eagle feathers. And then he is up at the head. All of these dancers wear a mask, and they are never to speak words at all. They can make animal sounds and bird sounds and other types of sounds, but they cannot uh, say words while they are in their uh, regalia of the, uh, the dancing and, and that that they have to participate in. And they also uh, have every piece of uh, clothing and that, or covering that they wear, has very sacred significance. And the, uh, the teaching is really, really quite extensive. But uh, you do need to know that uh, when the Yebiche dancers stand, stand up and they begin to uh, perform the dance and to, to sing the song, they line up behind the, uh, the head dancer, Hashayeshke, and Hashayjohan, uh, and all those uh, 12 of them line up. Way at the back, there's an extra uh, dancer. He's the one that they call Tone Nelly, water sprinkler. But he really is the clown. Now that water sprinkler and that clown is actually the symbolic of the five-fingered being, and that is us. He is a symbol of us at the way back after Hashayuan, uh, Hashayashki, and that. And so when they begin to dance, they watch the head dancer. If he takes one step to the left, they take one step to the left. If he takes two steps to the right, he takes two steps to the right. But that's the way the, the dancers follow each other, is that they follow the head dancer. They follow the speaker of peace. And the speakers of peace in the home follow everything that the head dancer does. And uh, the one that's at the back, Tone Nele, he can sometimes do the same thing as the dancers taking one step to the left and two to the right or whatever it is that they're doing. He's supposed to stay right behind them and do exactly as they do. And uh, the thing that he ends up doing is he begins to clown around. He runs off into the crowd and does silly things and everybody thinks he is so cute and that's why he's regarded as a clown but you have to remember that he is the one that is symbolic of all of the five-fingered beings we don't make the effort to follow the holy people to do exactly as they do and to follow them and the things that they try to instruct us with we always try to go and do the things that we think is funny and enjoyable and we try to satisfy our own physical appetite and we forget the things that are sacred and so it is that uh, that's the one thing about this particular ceremony that's an opportunity to be among the holy people to walk with them and to be with them and to make your promises and the promises is the anata ichni is the time when the two sacred beings appear and those are the things that we are kind of forgetting we are forgetting a lot of the traditional teachings, a lot of the ceremonies and that that are being performed. So much of it is being lost and our people are not learning to understand how Ahta is what they say. And uh, I would encourage young people to understand that uh, follow the holy people. They know what they're doing. Listen to the holy people's teachings and try to make your life enjoyable and have the peace and the confidence and that that comes when you follow the holy people. And those are the things that we are told. Yeah, yeah, yeah,